Hey guys, this is Rira. I come to talk to you about what I have either watched on TV, heard in the streets, or read in the blogs. Today, it is about what I have watched on TV. We are talking about 90 Day Fiance, Happily Ever After, Season 7. We are going to wrap up just so far the episodes of 1 through 10. I know I haven't been here in a minute. And I'm getting back into the swing of things. But we're just going to wrap these things up of each couple. My thoughts on each. Um, if you like what you hear, please make sure you hit the like button. Leave a comment. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. Um, I definitely want to hear from you. So let's get some of these couples out of the way. We're going to wrap up all seven couples. And my summary about each so far. So let's quickly get Andre and Elizabeth out the way. Um, Andre and Elizabeth are here. Really, I don't know why. Um, we are basically, so far, we find out that Elizabeth is pregnant with their second child. Andre is still the butthole that he's been since we were first introduced to him, showing no respect for Elizabeth or her family. But at this point, he is more successful. He has used um, Elizabeth's family as much as possible, um, particularly Chuck, the father, to get further along. Now, the only one that called this out was Charlie, the brother. Now, mind you, the sisters all feel the same way as the brother, but the brother was the one that, that acted upon his disdainment for Andre. And now everyone is using Kim as a scapegoat when actually he is a person they allowed uh, to be the shield to express to Andre exactly how they feel without looking like the bad person on TV. I think it's disgusting how they're treating Charlie. I think um, all of them are to blame for Charlie's action, especially Chuck, because throughout the seasons, we have watched Chuck play both sides. We have watched Chuck run his mouth to his family about his thoughts on Andre and then come to Elizabeth and Andre as if he wants to be like this great father-in-law that wants to help them get further along. So if anything, to me, it seemed more so as if Chuck was the battery pack for Charlie's um, action. And if I was Charlie, I would say, forget all of them because they clearly do not have his back. As far as Andre goes, Andre has basically gotten all that he can get out of them. They are living the better life. And now he's like, listen, we can officially move because now I got the sauce and I've learned everything I needed to learn to where I got the blueprint. I don't need your family anymore. So yeah, let's move away from them if we can. He's blaming the family for um, why he hasn't gotten his green card yet, which is somewhat odd considering of his bad history in his country. Like the man was an admitted police officer that I guess he said that he that um, did not play by the police's rules and it went against him. And so to the point where he can barely even come back to his country while letting everyone know that he's there. Like, if that's what I recall. So your bad history could just as well be the, the reason why this is not going as smoothly for you. And not just strictly, uh, I think it was someone in the family that called. Now, I want to be clear, I don't put it past them. I definitely don't put it past Charlie. Definitely sounds like something Charlie would do. But, you know, we can't quite nail it because, Andre, you do have bad history with your country. So that's all about them. Anything further, who cares? We do see that next episode, episode 11, where they do family counseling and that doesn't seem to go over too well. Let's move on. Okay, Yara and Jovi. Yara, as we know, is from the Ukraine and Ukraine has been, um, you know, currently is in a war with Russia. So Yara's family had to relocate. Well, they're currently in Prague and, you know, they, her and Jovi go to visit the mother. They're in Prague and now she's talking about residing in Prague. Like she's talking about remaining in Europe. I'm very glad that Jovi went with her there because Yara gives me the type that would have stayed out of the country because now she has a green card. So she probably would have stayed out of the country had Jovi not been with her, her and the daughter. And would have made all types of excuses as to why she's not coming back at this moment. You know, um, probably would have took a lot longer than just like a couple of weeks vacation. Um, which is very trifling considering that you did not mention this to your husband or your in-laws before heading out. Uh, <coughs> Sorry, guys. I ate a piece of candy. 
we do see that in the next episode, she speaks of her and Jovi having issues. <coughs> Sorry, guys. I mean, you, you and Jovi Ben had issues, which further makes me believe that you just wanted to secure your spot um, in receiving your paper. So then therefore you can come in and out as you want to. Um, I think that, and I believe that also with the influence of her friends, because as I spoke to you guys before, there's no reason why Yara's friends were comfortable speaking such, you know, belittling things about Jovi, who is Yara's husband, directly to her. So just like Chuck used Charlie to get out the frustration that he has with Andre, I feel the same way with Yara and her friends. You use your friends to get out the frustration you have about Jovi. And um, I'm glad that Jovi went with her there because she probably would have kept the daughter there a lot longer than expected, sending Jovi into like a rage, you know, like it's just not okay the way that she went about this. Um, so yeah, that's all about them. We move on. Shaida and Bilal. I feel no sympathy for Shaida. Shaida, you knew beforehand, before you married this man, that in regards to a baby, he was just not on board with it. He was very comfortable with the two kids that he got. They're already teenagers. They probably got another five years and then they're both off to college and then he's able to travel the world and live his best life. He does not want to start over. You knew this. You went and you thought that putting it into an uh, prenup was a way of securing things. And, and I wish your lawyer would have explained things further that, that putting in a baby in a prenup it's not going to secure anything. For all we know, Bilal could have had a vasectomy without even telling you. You know, like for all we now we find out that she has um, reproductive issues that, of course, a lot of women during later years, because she is 37 going on 38, um, you know, it becomes a little bit more difficult for a woman to conceive in comparison to someone that is 25. Um, that's not always the case, but you know, the percentage is, is a lot higher for women being more difficult, um, and being able to carry the child full term during your later years than your earlier years. She speaks with the doctor. The doctor tells her, listen, you don't have much time, um, to, to figure this out. Meanwhile, Bilal is like, yeah, let's wait another two years in two years, two to three years, she'll be 40 years old. And the doctor's already telling her that she is having a hard time, that she may have a hard time with this. I feel no sympathy for Shaida because you knew that this was not his plan from the beginning. And so even though Bilal has not been clear by saying, oh yeah, you know, we'll try, you know, we'll try and so forth. And now he's backpedaling to his original thoughts of, well, maybe let's wait a little bit. Um, waiting is not in your cards at this moment. I mean, you could, I mean, God has the final say, but you know, Shaida, I, I, I just, honestly, I have no sympathy for you. So we move on. Angela and Michael, there's really nothing much to say. Bottom line is that Angela used Michael to get on TV. Angela has been on plenty of TV shows from Steve Wilkos, Jerry Springer, you name it. She has been trying to just get on Ratchet TV. And that is why Angela acts like a fool throughout 90 day fiance episodes cheapening the brand with all of her fighting and her belittling towards Michael, which I find to be truly disgusting. Um, yeah, Angela just used him to get on TV. You never had any intentions of bringing him to the country. You can't just say that you didn't know that he was using you when the first season that you were on, you literally hand him a Donald Trump hat and a, um, and an American shirt saying, mm, I guess you're coming to America as if he was winning a game prize. So you knew good and well that it wasn't from love from the beginning. You did not care because you had no, no plans of bringing him over. You just wanted to remain on TV a little bit longer, get a little bit more check so that you could take care of your grandkids that you are solely responsible for. This was not about Michael, okay? Michael allowed you to belittle him all the time because he thought he was going to eventually make his way to America. And you allowed Michael, to, you tagged Michael along because you just want to continue on TV. 
Both of you guys used one another. I have no sympathy for either one of you. Now you're probably realizing like, mm, okay, my time on 90 Day Fiance may be coming a little bit closer to an end because of course they're bringing in new couples. So with this being said, you're like, hey, you know what? I think you're using me. Um, You need to turn off your social media, even though you're completely talking to a whole nother man in Canada. This is ridiculous. And I want you guys to also remember that TLC does not pay the foreigners. TLC pays the American citizens. So it is up to the, for to the citizens to go and to share that money with the foreigners. Do you think that Angela shared that money with Michael? Probably not. And that is why Michael is there asking her for money. She knows he's not working. You're okay with that. And I don't think she shared that money. We realized that that's how TLC pays based on the season where Usman had baby girl Lisa. And remember it came out that she did not hand over part of the check. She chose to keep it all. And that's how we found out that TLC does not pay the foreigners. Look up what I'm telling you. So that's all I have to say in regards to Michael um, and Angela. We move on. Liz and Ed is also going to be short to me. First of all, I don't know why Liz and Ed are on this season. Ed is with an American girl. 90 Day Fiance is about an American and a foreigner. We did not ask for Ed to be back on 90 Day Fiance. I am convinced that Ed must know a producer. He must know an editor. He must know someone either with TLC or with the show of 90 Day Fiance. But there is no reason why he is on this season or any season. You should have kept him on the single life. Let him maneuver through there. But we did not ask for him here. Ed is a manipulator and Ed is a, a person that preys on the weak. Okay? And I compare this to, I compare his relationship with, with Liz to his relationship with Rose. Ed is one of these guys that you find these girls in this destitute situation, just like Rose from the Philippines that was living below poverty lines, sleeping on the concrete floor with drainage and with huge rats crawling around. I compare it the same thing. And if you remember, Rose came out and said that Ed was using her that even if she asked for just something to feed her family, he was telling her to basically, this is all allegedly though, to basically go online and post naked photos, telling her to send him some things, to send him videos, before he would even agree to even send her money that cost the equivalence of, 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 of a, a delivery pizza here in the U.S., and Ed has found the same thing in Liz. He has found a girl from a destitute situation, a girl who was living in her car, a girl who was raised by her grandparents, a girl who comes from below poverty lines, barely making it, found her at a, at a restaurant where she's bartending, no, I mean waitressing. And it's like, yeah, I'm going to provide you a better life. Basically, I'm going to provide you stability. And every time she pisses him off, he throws it in her face, pack your things, get out. Give me everything back. Knowing that she probably doesn't have many places to go to. And that's why she is putting up with his nonsense and is crying every time. Hoping that they can work it out. Liz, let me tell you something. I don't know if you'll ever see this video. But let me say this, girl. You're a gorgeous girl. Gorgeous. Girl, you're better off dating one of your co-workers. Who's also living off of tips. At that restaurant that you're working at. Than you are dealing with an old man. Who's insecure. Who's manipulative manipulative and takes advantage of your current situation and lack of stability. 
Ed is, is the same old Ed. He is still praying. The only difference is, is that he's no longer doing it with a foreigner. He's found a young American girl to do that to. He has no intentions of marrying that girl. He has no intention. Ed reminds me of those Hollywood photographer, producers, writers, the ones that uses these girls who are looking to make it. Take advance, take advantage of them as if he's going to help them when he's really has no intentions of helping them only to some, to satisfy their own sexual desires. That is what Ed reminds me of. And please, Father God, please TLC producers and 90 Day Fiance producers, do not bring them back. We do not ask for Ed. We do not care for Ed. It is triggering to a lot of us. Okay? Jenny and Submit. I am over Submit. Submit against your family's wishes. Against everyone wishes you when you married you a woman close to twelve twice your age. Jenny is in her 60s, but behaves and looks, might I add, like someone well into their 70s. I don't care about her Walmart younger cheap t-shirts and things. Jenny looks very much 75 years old and behaves as such. Jenny, I'm still trying to figure out where, what is the love here? I'm with your parents on this at this point. Jenny can't cook. Jenny can't clean. Jenny refuses to learn how to cook. Jenny refuses to learn how to clean. You're taking her to karma. You're taking a senior citizen to karma suture classes. Hoping for what? Hoping that she'll be able to move her body in certain ways and do certain things like that of someone that your age would have been able to do. You're hoping that a senior citizen can. Are you serious, Samit? You cannot be serious. Jenny brings nothing to this relationship. Nothing. And it's completely all the years she's been in this country. Has not learned to, to move her surroundings around without Samit. Has not attempted to learn the language, to even communicate. It is ridiculous. Now Samir wants to go back to work. And Jenny is upset with that. Why? Because Jenny is at retirement age. So she is hoping that they sit there and watch old movies or whatever that they're doing in India while Samit, while Samit is at an age where he still wants to be productive in society. This is a mismatch like no other mismatch. This is exactly what, when Samit's parents went to that astrologer a couple of seasons ago, when he said, let them do it, go ahead and give them the green light because they'll fall apart on their own. And slowly, Samit is starting to realize that. Slowly, she is starting to realize that. I mean, he is. I don't see this lasting up to five years, but I'm mad that he would even give five years. It's ridiculous. Another couple that's a waste of our time. Okay. Now let's get to the meat and the potatoes. Kim and Usman. When I tell you I have been clutching my pearls in regards to Kim and Usman, like I can't. Usman is a dusty Okay, then what is a dusty? Just a, a, a low vibrational man, you know, just sloppy, sloppy in look, sloppy in character, sloppy in behavior, sloppy in mindset. He is a dusty. Usman goes and sits there last week on our TV saying that, you know, he has all of these women in his DMs. As he's talking, saying like that he is like basically like who's the one losing if the relationship comes to an end. This man sat there and spoke that to us with dry hair 
and with missing teeth in his mouth. As if he's been chewing bricks. Okay? Looking dusty. Usman does not look like any bit of a celebrity that he claims that he is. Usman lied and told us that Nigeria has a billion people. Usman can't count. I'm convinced. And that's why he handed the man, the goat seller, the money to count for him. Because there is not a, a billion people in Nigeria. And then said that he is the most successful of his region. Which region is that? Because he can't be speaking about all of Nigeria. He must be speaking about the town that he's from. Because the most successful, and a lot of people are going to know this one, would be a whiz kid or a burner boy. These are artists who have Grammy Awards. These are artists who are known worldwide. These are artists that have worked with the greats, such as Beyonce. Okay, we don't know you, Usman, outside of this 90 Day Fiance TLC show. Okay, we don't know you. We don't know your god awful music. We don't know you. If people are recognizing you, it must be in your village, in your town, and it must be only because of this TLC. But don't you dare say that your music is being played in any clubs. I doubt it. Okay. That music video that you went to Tanzania for last season, where is it so we can premiere it? Where is it? Unbelievable. And Kimberly's desperate behind. After you then went to convince your friends and your family after snapping on your girlfriends who was trying to snap sense into your head by saying that they're not happy for me, they're this and they're that, we are so much in love, blah, blah, blah. Usman got himself on national TV to remind you that in his mind, you're ugly to him and that he's doing you a favor. Usman said this on national TV. I have never been more embarrassed watching that man display his true thoughts towards you. You went to his family and his family after the horrendous act and behavior and character of baby girl Lisa was like, no, we are over it. We want nothing to do with another American woman. We are over it. Okay? Kimberly has convinced herself that being the second wife is worse than being the first wife. Kimberly, both of y'all sharing a man. Kimberly, the first wife only benefits in the event of death, if the uh, death of Usman, and that's only if the first wife gave birth to a male. Your son is not Usman's son in Nigerian culture. Your son is your son. So the second wife that will give birth will still be more important regardless if something was to happen to Uzi it will go towards her son who will be responsible to distribute it to everyone else if he's responsible Kimberly it does not matter whether you are first or second now I do however though am going to contradict myself because then I'm like the mother clearly feels like the first wife matters in a sense that, well, you be the second wife because they know good and well that a Nigerian woman probably wouldn't be like, uh, I don't want to be the second wife to a 50 plus year old woman that can't give them kids. Okay. So it's, it's kind of, I don't know. I guess I kind of contradicted myself right there, but I want to be clear to Kimberly though, whether you are first or second you have no power. You have no rights in regards to this because you, have, you cannot give him a child. So Usman, now snapping on you, he was out of line for. That should have been enough for you to take yourself on that plane and go home, girl. But you refuse to. You come back to try to reason with a man that just called you ugly. 
with a dusty man who is getting a quote unquote pedicure that is more than likely to give him athlete's foot due to an infection from using a dirty ass scissors. Excuse my French. You can't, you can't make this up. Then the mother says, listen, I got a cousin for you to marry Usman, a cousin. That's blood. Usman goes, oh, oh yeah, you know, one of her friends, uh, uh, daughters. No, 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 no. That's not what your mama said. Your mother made it very clear. A paternal cousin. That's right. A cousin on your daddy's side. That's literally what your mama said. Now, Usman, you went and you said to us last episode that you got young, rich girls in the inbox waiting to marry you now. If you had that, then why the heck are you resorting, resorting to marrying your blood relative, creating an incest, and taking a risk of your children being healthy or not? This makes all no sense. Kim, if you don't get yourself home and leave this man alone and stop embarrassing yourself on this national TV, you're talking about what you won't put up with, baby girl. You have. You have. Go home, mama. Go home. It's not worth it. Okay, so that is my thoughts on this entire season thus far. Um, let me know what you guys think on everything. Should Liz and Ed go home? Like, we are so over them. Um, they should not be on any other seasons. Do you guys agree with that statement? Um, do we care about Andre and Elizabeth, honestly? I mean, congratulations to the um, the the second child, the pregnancy of the second child. Um, their daughter is already adorable. So, you know, congrats, but we're bored. We're, we're over this Charlie storyline. Jenny, if Samit don't... Should Samit leave Jenny at this point? Can, can Jenny learn something like what is Jenny offering I just want to know what y'all think Jenny is offering submit that is beneficial to him at his 33 years of age okay um yes leave your comment below like comment and subscribe